السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسد ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی نائن آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان آئی جسٹ فنشڈ وتھ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی فیز آف پرائسنگ ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ دا پرائسنگ بینگ دا لاسٹ فیز آف دی اسٹریٹجک برانڈ مینجمنٹ پروسیس The discussion on uh, all the phases involved within the process comes to an end. The meaning could be started with uh, the discussion on uh, the brand's positioning and uh, from there we got on to developing the brand's picture uh, which comprises of uh, the brand's associations and the contract, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, then moved on to the brand extensions and uh, the different portfolios uh, forming uh, the complete um, the brand architecture and from there we moved on to uh, developing uh, the right most the channels for uh, distributing your uh, the brands the discussion on uh, the channels of our distribution uh, paved the way uh, toward uh, developing the right most uh, communication strategies and uh, from communication strategies the discussion went on to the Uh, pricing phase, which, like I said, is the final phase within the strategic management process relating brand management. Now, what we are going to discuss from today onwards is not going to be the, the process itself. Rather, we are going to talk about things which related to uh, execution and uh, the planning side of uh, the brand management. In order to make sure that uh, the execution of uh, all the strategies uh, which you so painstakingly uh, put in place to be successful in the marketplace, you've got to make sure that uh, the discipline of execution uh, takes precedence over anything else and uh, your brand uh, becomes uh, a success in the market, meaning the movement of the brand in relation to the customer's preferences and in relation to a customer's loyalty toward it has start to stay intact. And we all know that since the marketplace is a very dynamic place and the brand movement is subject to so many different upheavals, we've got to make sure that all the changes that are taking place in the market are known to us as this, so that we can take the corrective action the moment those the changes take place. Changes could be for the better and changes could be for the worse. So the question that uh, comes to the mind is uh, after uh, putting uh, so many strategies in place, starting with positioning and uh, right up to the pricing, we are now uh, done with um, all the uh, planning of uh, the process that, uh, that we had at our hand. And Executing it is the next challenge. We are now in the process of executing it. Sales are taking place in the market. These strategies are being translated into tactics. We are seeing results day in and day out. We should not be sitting idle. Of course, we are um, taking care of the day-to-day -day management. But then at the same time, we've got to make sure by certain means, that the performance of the brand, which we have developed so painstakingly, has got to be measured. So in other words, what we are managing has got to be measurable. And measuring the performance of a brand is going to be the topic of discussion in today's lecture. How do we measure the performance? We have so many different means at our disposal. And uh, with all those means, with, I would again say, with, are with, the very strategic in nature. And uh, with all the elements and factors that I'm going to talk about are no longer uh, unfamiliar to you because uh, with, we have learned all those in their uh, with, the basic um, preliminary nature. Therefore, it only is a question of developing or understanding how to put all those elements and factors together in order to see that uh, with, whatever we planned with, is being implemented in the right most fashion, meaning in the most effective way, and further meaning uh, giving us the required level of sales, which is the name of the game. Because uh, without uh, registering uh, the requisite level of sales, 
uh, we cannot say that uh, the brand is performing well. So uh, the sales being uh, one of the measures, uh, we definitely are going to talk about so many other uh, the measures uh, which are involved um, in seeing uh, how a brand is moving. Because the objective remains, like I pointed out in the beginning, uh, to bring about corrective actions in your tactical moves to the while you implement your strategies. Such the measures that we undertake uh, the really allow us to the look into the different areas in a very insightful and uh, analytical way. Uh, one of the things you know it really uh, allows us to do is to look into the, the overall uh, strategic the brand movement in light of the overall strategy that we crafted. If the brand is moving in the right direction um, in its the macro the manifestations, then we can say the all is well. That is one thing uh, these measures uh, allow us to look into. The other area these measures really allow us to look into is the, like the brand's positioning. If there are any changes desired in brand's positioning, it is because of uh, these measures that we undertake from time to time that we can bring about those changes to correct brand's positioning. These measures could also allow us to look into the, uh, the overall need for the resources that we need to execute all the strategies. No question, we carried out an analysis of the whole situation while we were going through the planning process and we did come up with an exhaustive list of all the resources that we needed to implement all the strategies. But then, given the dynamism of the market, you never know when a change takes place and you really have to reconsider the totality of resources that you need to to execute in an effective way with your strategies. Um, another area in which we really can look into very analytically because of the support from the performance the measures the mechanism is the area of communication. We really can bring about changes and improvements in our communication executions. Uh, if not uh, the strategy itself. Uh, the strategies, like I keep pointing out, are uh, not uh, changed every now and then. It is the, the tactical execution which is subject to uh, changes from time to time. Uh, another area which is um, affected by these uh, the performance measures is the area of uh, the pricing. Uh, we really can uh, get very incisive insights into the right level of uh, the pricing points that we must achieve. But based on uh, the different pricing models that uh, we discussed, that we can make uh, the changes in the, the pricing uh, the mechanism or uh, the pricing level so that uh, we can generate the right levels of revenues and uh, the margins and profitability and so on and so forth. Performance measures could also allow us to identify areas of growth within the category and across categories in order for us to go into the brand stretch and the brand extension. It is because of such measures that we really can lay our hands on what to do in relation to extending the range in terms of ingredients, different formats, sizes, or whatever. All those areas that we have been talking about and that we are familiar with. The question here is, if we have the accounting measures already in place in shape of the revenues, profitability, the different margins, and uh, the returns on sales and uh, the returns on investment. Why the major performance? Because these um, financial measures do give us a lot of insight into what is happening within the company. We have the results. So why have uh, the more measures? Well, 
the answer lies in the following. Under the surface of uh, the financial results and uh, different kinds of uh, statistical figures are certain strategic factors which cause subtle changes in brand movement as the time passes by. What are those uh, strategic factors we are going to look into? So, in other words, if uh, the financial results are the final figures which uh, let us look into the performance of the company, these strategic factors are the ones which really cause those results. So in other words, there is a cause and effect relationship between these factors and the financial results that we gain at the end of any given period, meaning at the end of every month, quarter, year, and the brand plan period. We have to look at this cause and effect relationship in a very analytical way. There uh, are different models uh, put forth by theorists uh, in terms of these factors, uh, but uh, what I can uh, talk about is the um, summarized form of uh, those factors on which uh, most of the theorists agree that uh, those are the factors uh, causing uh, changes and affecting uh, the relationship uh, between those particular factors and the financial results. So therefore, uh, while uh, we look forward to achieving certain financial results, before we get those, uh, we have to look into the factors in order to uh, make sure that uh, whatever is happening is happening in just about the right most way. So in other words, these factors allow us to preempt uh, certain things uh, which, if take place, will lead to uh, results which will not be very highly positive. So these factors are uh, the four in number, starting with uh, differentiation, uh, getting on to relevance, to esteem, and to knowledge. According to the theorists, uh, a brand develops itself in a sequential way going through these four strategic factors and uh, any changes which are caused within these factors uh, are the ones which really affect the financial performance. So we've got to know how these factors work and uh, on that basis we've got to know how to measure these so that we can ensure that the performance that we are going to get is going to be in line with the objectives that we envisaged. Let us uh, the, take a look at uh, the illustration of uh, these uh, the sequential um, steps and uh, the, we can uh, the, see for ourselves that uh, the differentiation uh, sits right on top. This comes first because uh, the, without uh, the ambitious uh, the level of uh, the differentiation, we just cannot make our brand powerful. We cannot go for a premium price and therefore a certain the level of differentiation uh, is the the bottom line characteristic of uh, any brand that is uh, wanting to achieve uh, the power in the marketplace and a brand which is going to be effective in the marketplace and a brand whose performance is going to be in line with the stated objectives. As you can see from uh, the illustration, the second uh, the factor is uh, relevance. Next on the model, it means that a brand must have clear meaning for its users. Unless it is relevant for the target market, the level of differentiation is no good for the target market. I will explain this concept with the help of um, an example. You will agree with me that uh, the professional cameras, although being very highly differentiated, are no good for the market of those the users who want to use cameras for the everyday occasions. And by the same token, sports cars, although are very highly differentiated, are no good for those who want to use cars for everyday use. So this is what really is meant by relevance. A brand has got to be relevant to the target market. And the moment it starts 
assuming proportions and features which do not really have an appeal for the target market, it is no longer relevant. In order for a brand to be successful and effective and powerful, it has to be highly differentiated and also it has to have a high level of relevance. And uh, the theorists are of the view that any of the brand managers so they must strive for these characteristics to be in place for the brand they are handling. And they go on to say that um, differentiation multiplied by relevance is what you call brand strength. This takes us on to the factor number three, which is esteem. Esteem is uh, related with uh, the way customers perceive quality. The rise and decline in popularity of a brand is directly related with esteem. If you have forget the loyal customers, they are bound to hold your brand in high esteem. And if customers are disgruntled because of certain problems with the brand, they are not going to hold the brand in high esteem. They will hold it in low esteem. That takes us on to the fourth factor, which is knowledge. According to theorists, knowledge relates to the brand's positioning. Now, what this really means is that uh, your customers do not only have to be aware of um, the existence of uh, your brand, they must fully understand what the brand stands for. They must be fully aware of the brand picture, the, the promises the brand carries, and uh, they must be also uh, very satisfied that uh, the set of promises with which the brand uh, the carries with itself is being delivered. When customers could have that kind of feeling, uh, which can be summarized uh, like the following, if customers are fully satisfied with um, uh, the value uh, the brand carries, they are fully knowledgeable about the brand and uh, they fully understand the positioning of the brand. And that really is the, uh, the last and uh, very important factor uh, which really testifies that um, the existence of the brand is pretty much owned by the loyal customers because uh, they fully understand what the brand is all about. So it is uh, much more than uh, a simple recall or simple awareness uh, about the brand. A complete knowledge on part of your customers is something which creates brand loyal customers and uh, which wins over new customers and uh, which retains the customers over a long and longer period of time. I will explain uh, what I've talked about with the help of uh, another uh, graphic illustration. Uh, that as you can see uh, from this illustration, the four factors that I just talked about, meaning differentiation, the relevance, esteem and knowledge could be uh, divided into two different groups and uh, these groups are uh, called uh, two different constructs. Construct number one is uh, the differentiation times relevance which is equal to brand strength like I told you earlier and uh, the construct number two is esteem multiplied by knowledge equaling uh, stature. Uh, so this means uh, if a brand has uh, the high level of esteem and you multiply that esteem with uh, a high level of knowledge on part of your customers, the stature of your brand is very high in the eyes of the market. So in other words, if a brand has uh, the two uh, constructs uh, to itself uh, in a healthy way, uh, then uh, it has you know, strength and it has high stature. And these are the two uh, strategic um, kind of assets which really drive a brand's growth. These are the four factors which uh, I just talked about that consist of um, uh, so many different variants. So we can put it like this, if we have two different constructs, the one uh, relating brand strength and uh, the other relating brand's stature, these two constructs are uh, divided into uh, four different dimensions uh, which uh, are going to start with uh, the brand differentiation on to uh, the relevance and on to esteem and knowledge. Then these uh, the four uh, dimensions could be further subdivided into different 
variants. And uh, it is the study of uh, those variants which uh, we are going to undertake in order to use those very variants uh, as um, the tools for uh, the performance measure of your brand. So in other words, if something goes wrong with uh, the level of differentiation or uh, the customers uh, start perceiving uh, your brand as uh, no longer being as differentiated as it used to be, uh, only because of the fact that uh, the competitors can have come out with products which are uh, much highly differentiated, then uh, it is going to be uh, this uh, the very uh, performance measure, meaning a performance measure along the dimension of differentiation, which is going to allow you to bring about the corrective action so that uh, you can uh, bring that about and uh, correct the situation and uh, be back on track to achieve the results as envisaged. Or maybe you can improve on the results to which you had set forth as your objectives. This is the one explanation of why we use the different variants of the dimensions that form two different constructs. With the help of another graphic illustration, I'm going to talk about all these variants which, uh, in other words, are the performance tools at our disposal to the measure of a brand or brand's performance. Let's uh, take a look at those. Before uh, I start talking about uh, different tools uh, in their individual uh, the form and capacity, let me explain uh, all over again that uh, these tools uh, are to be used with the help of research models. You've got to carry out market research and it doesn't really call for very complex models. All it calls for is consistency on your part. The meaning you've got to carry this out once in a while, maybe once a year, so that you stay on the track and know the kind of changes that are taking place. These subtle changes which really have the potential to bring about the huge changes in terms of your financial results. So instead of waiting until you get the financial results, and then looking back, what really went wrong, you would like to measure the performance of the brand with the help of these tools, which will allow you to look into um, what really is it that you can do in order to assure a good future for your brand. That is the basic objective. The, the first performance measure that uh, you're going to have at uh, your disposal uh, is about brand's awareness, recognition, and recall. And uh, let me repeat that uh, this is uh, one of the variants of um, the dimension of um, differentiation. What is meant by recall, recognition, and awareness is uh, that your customers uh, must be uh, able to recall your brand uh, in a way that they really recognize it. It is not simple awareness. It is uh, their impression, a very distinct impression about the uh, identity of your brand and uh, they should be able to recall that uh, with the help of uh, the certain other uh, characteristics that uh, your brand carries. So in other words, uh, this uh, the recall and recognition is uh, similar to the recall and recognition uh, which uh, is generally used by ad agencies as um, a tool to measure the success level of their campaign. But the difference lies in it being going a little further than that. The way it really goes further than that is that it really serves as a very good tool to measure and then develop brand equity in the sense that it brings to you a host of information in relation to the brand awareness and recognition and that is the information which you really can use uh, not only um, to be uh, very satisfied and content about uh, having uh, a great level of awareness on your brand, but rather being able to use that information for different uh, the variables of the marketing mix. The, the information that you generate uh, through the, uh, the questionnaire or through the research model uh, that really helps you in um, developing relationships uh, of that level of awareness and recognition with your uh, communication strategy, for example, 
uh, that can also be used uh, in relation to uh, your uh, pricing strategy and that also uh, can be used in relation to uh, your channels strategies. So uh, all these tools are going to uh, offer you uh, certain results uh, which are uh, going to be uh, multi-purpose. While you carry out research, you, you've got to make sure that um, the questions uh, are constructed in a way that uh, they generate the nature of response that you would like to have. I'm not saying the response that you may like to have, but you certainly would like to have response which is very positive in relation to your brand. But what is, what is of importance is the nature of response has got to lead you to decide what uh, is actually being felt and being considered by your respondents. So while you carry out this research, you know, getting back to uh, the, the first tool of uh, awareness, recall, and recognition. Uh, you also uh, have to uh, make sure that uh, you do talk about uh, the symbols and imagery. Uh, because in many cases, uh, you just cannot separate the brand name from the imagery. And uh, when you talk about um, in a direct or an indirect way about the symbols and the images that you have uh, as part of the, the brand identity, uh, people, I mean the respondents, can think of uh, there are so many things and uh, they develop those with uh, the images that they already have uh, in their minds and may come up with uh, the kind of response which uh, may give you certain positive leads and you can then measure the level of uh, actual awareness, recognition and recall in relation to your brand and uh, then you can uh, use that information to, uh, to bring about uh, and, and develop important relationships in terms of, like I said earlier, communication or channels um, or uh, the pricing strategy. This is uh, all about the first the performance uh, measuring tool um, along the differentiation uh, dimension. Let us now get on to the second one, which deals with uh, brands Persona recognition. Uh, this uh, measures the extent. This uh, measures the extent to which uh, your uh, brand is consistent uh, with its persona. You created your brand on the basis of uh, the certain uh, characteristics, and uh, you thought that the brand will look at develop certain associations uh, when it is received by the customers. So this measure really lets you look into to what extent you've been uh, successful in developing the right uh, the kinds of associations in the minds of your uh, customers. Uh, the benefits which uh, you are delivering, uh, are those benefits being perceived the way you thought would be perceived by your customers? So that is uh, the measure which uh, really lets you look into the consistencies which you have been or have not been able to develop in terms of the, uh, the brand's personality. Uh, it should be uh, judged uh, by the degree to which customers uh, perceive receiving the benefits, um, so to say, and uh, the developing associations with the brand. If the customers could really have uh, been able to develop at a certain level of emotional associations, then that is the, the ultimate success of uh, the consistency of uh, the personality with which you created with um, the way it is being perceived by your customers in the marketplace. You, therefore, um, again, could have to devise uh, a questionnaire could, which uh, really evokes the correct answers could, in terms of uh, the associations could, which you thought could, should be um, developed and uh, should be evoked you know, on part of the customers. Any variations could, which uh, could, you detect could have to be taken care of uh, to give you one example, uh, how to go about uh, correcting uh, the uh, gaps uh, while you undertake this uh, the performance measure tool, if you intended to uh, develop um, uh, your brand's persona as uh, the being friendly and informal, and uh, the results of uh, the market research uh, show that uh, the people are... Um, are perceiving it to be very much contrary to what you had tried to create, 
uh, the user certainly have to take a corrective action. You may have to do something with the imagery, you may have to do something with uh, the package, and uh, they may also have to do something with uh, the overall uh, the communication campaign because uh, your brand persona is not being considered the way that you had intended to create. The meaning uh, the friendly and informal. But there may be people look upon uh, that brand as being very serious and tight-lipped, so to say. Uh, so uh, therefore, uh, it is an opportunity uh, for you uh, uh, with the help of uh, this performance tool to uh, make things fall in place uh, where uh, uh, you can bring about a corrective action. The, the chances are uh, uh, if you had uh, created uh, the right persona, then um, the uh, persona which is being perceived uh, by your customers uh, may not be that much off the mark that you have to bring about a complete change in your uh, communication strategies. These uh, the performance uh, the measuring tools uh, the point out to those subtle changes which uh, have taken place and um, in response to those subtle changes you have to bring about certain adjustments within the, your technical execution. Any uh, radical change which uh, you think that it have to be brought about that it has to be uh, in uh, response to um, a, a tremendous change in the, in the market uh, due to a great upheaval or something like that. Generally, what I'm saying is uh, strategies which have been crafted very carefully after taking into consideration all the elements uh, within the marketplace, uh, the, you, the chances are may not go that much wrong. This uh, the takes us on to the, uh, the third variant of uh, the, uh, the first dimension of uh, differentiation, and uh, that is contract fulfillment. We all know that uh, the contract is uh, a set of promises which uh, the brand makes to its uh, the customers. And uh, when a brand makes uh, a set of promises, it doesn't say all that uh, on the package. Uh, it becomes automatic. And we also know that the contract which uh, a brand is uh, supposed to be delivering is not uh, a legal contract. It uh, basically is very emotional and uh, it basically is very economic in nature. Uh, your customers could have to generate... Your customers could have to generate an optimal level of uh, economic benefit uh, out of the product meaning your brand that to buy. And uh, you've got to make sure that uh, the contract which uh, you have created uh, for that customer is fully delivered. Any breaches uh, that may take place here and there within uh, different areas of uh, the marketing mix have got to be corrected. And uh, you're going to find that out only with the help of uh, the market research model which I'm talking about again and again because that is the only way to find out what is really happening in the marketplace so that you can assure a good future for the brand. Back to breaches. The breaches in the contract may take place uh, in so many different forms and shapes. If you are not uh, delivering the right uh, the quality, a breach has taken place. So the corrective action has to be taken somewhere along the, the manufacturing process. The beauty of this research is that uh, it really points out what really is uh, the wrong with the brand because it talks about the perceptions and uh, also reactions uh, of uh, your respondents. A breach uh, may also take place uh, in case of a brand not being available. If uh, the availability of your brand is erratic, the meaning if you cannot serve your customers by making your brand available um, at um, the, the places of their uh, the preference, then uh, the you have uh, the breached your contract. Because the perception on part of the customers is that uh, it is not available everywhere. Uh, despite the fact that uh, you may think otherwise. So this is a breach which has taken place. And again, the beauty of uh, this performance measure is that uh, it pinpoints and identifies the areas where you are going wrong and uh, where you really can take the corrective action 
And uh, if that tech action is taken, you uh, assure your brand a good future. If you are in a position to fulfill your brand contract, um, say the 100%, uh, that then that you are creating a lot of trust on uh, the part of the customers. And uh, it is that trust uh, which really uh, that creates uh, the brand loyal customers. And brand loyal customers uh, have uh, a lot of referral power. It is because of that loyalty that uh, the brand attracts many more customers to itself and the process goes on and on. You must have heard um, about strong brands. Well, it sells so much because it has a lot, lot of loyalty. And uh, that is what really is meant by loyalty. So uh, we have uh, completed uh, our discussion on uh, the three uh, the basic variants uh, in the shape of um, awareness, recognition, and recall performance measure, and brand uh, persona measure, and uh, the brand contract measure. If uh, we are in a position to uh, develop the right uh, the marketing research models uh, which uh, can help us evoke the correct responses to uh, which uh, we really need to have to make uh, the right decisions about the uh, tactical changes that are desired to assure uh, the desired level of financial results, then we are going to be uh, successful and effective in undertaking such tools. Let us now get on to the second uh, dimension of uh, the process, the dimension of uh, relevance. This dimension is divided into six different variants. Uh, the first one being market share. Uh, the market share is uh, a performance measuring tool uh, which is undertaken by the most of the companies all over the world. I mean, there's hardly a company which uh, does not know the share of its market, meaning the, the part of the market that it has to itself within the category it operates within. It really lets you develop a picture of uh, the number of customers that you may have or the level of the usage which um, uh, defines the size of your market uh, vis-a-vis your competition. And we all know that uh, it is because of the market share that uh, we um, define the various the levels of uh, uh, the dominance in terms of um, the one pair being the leader, the other being number two, number three, and number four, and so on and so forth. This is uh, an important measure, and this is not a difficult measure. Uh, it does not really require an extensive uh, marketing research tool. Um, this is something in which you can develop uh, internally, and uh, this is something which you also can develop with the help of uh, an agency which specializes in um, sizing up the different companies uh, by way of their uh, shares of their respective markets. The choice is yours, but uh, what it really means is it is going to be a change in the market share which is going to uh, pinpoint the, the performance which you are um, showing to the company and which you are measuring by using the market share as a tool. The second variant is uh, the purchase frequency. This measure uh, lets you have the number of times could your customers could buy your product. Number of times in relation to the one particular period, the meaning one particular buying cycle. You are the best judge about uh, the general frequency relating to your uh, the brand purchase. And you know what the brand criteria is, and as part of that criteria, what is the frequency on, on part of the most of the customers. And this is where you seek help of your sales staff also, and your other members of the channel. But you have to have some kind of the market research model which really lets you have this information and which really can let you develop a picture 
about the frequency. Uh, this uh, may also fall under uh, what you call usage um, test. That uh, is a test which is carried out by way of uh, a model uh, which asks very pertinent questions uh, in relation to uh, the frequency. So you've got to make sure that uh, the responses that you get are evoked in, uh, in, in just about the most practical way. The objective uh, here is uh, for you to uh, look into how can I increase the usage on part of the customers and how can I increase the number of times they buy my brand. These are the insights which you will get only if you get the right responses and uh, if you can really measure uh, the performance of the brand by knowing the actual frequency. The third variant is about uh, the customer uh, the satisfaction. Well, this uh, the performance measure is uh, very straightforward and um, it provides uh, you a rating um, on the uh, degree of satisfaction in relation to the, your brand vis-a-vis -vis competition. It also shows you how much willing your customers are to stick to your brand. And uh, you can then uh, work out things like uh, the lifetime value of your customers because uh, you can identify and work out uh, how many of them are loyal and uh, how many of them uh, can uh, or will uh, refer your brand to others. Um, it all depends on uh, the re research model which you have uh, carried out to evoke the right kinds of responses in relation to all these uh, uh, factors or findings which I'm talking about. So the beauty, I would say it all over again of uh, these uh, the performance measures is that uh, you should develop your uh, the questionnaire or the market research model in a way that uh, it must um, evoke the rightmost responses to the which uh, must uh, allow you to make uh, the rightmost decisions for the changes if those are desired. And uh, I can say it with, uh, with a lot of confidence that uh, with the understanding that uh, you've had so far about uh, the, the basic uh, uh, strategic framework relating uh, the brand management process, that you should be in a position to develop uh, a research model which will uh, uh, let you measure uh, performance of your brand on uh, satisfaction of customers. It shouldn't be difficult. Even if you are not doing it yourself, you should be in a position to make very important inputs toward letting it develop by somebody else. The other variant of this dimension is the brand-driven penetration. You will recall that we talked so much about the brand extensions and the line extensions. Well, one of the basic objectives is to get more and more into the categories, if not within the same category, but also into other categories with the help of a brand which is familiar and which is very well known. It is now the stage that you have to test all that, whether the decision which you took in terms of the brand extension or line ex extension was viable or not. So this uh, the performance measure uh, lets you uh, test the weather penetration in relation to extendability of the brand that it was okay or not okay. So again, you have to come up with uh, the kind of questions with which um, uh, let you gauge whether you should get into any uh, the further extensions or not. Uh, the results may show that uh, the customers are not going to buy any further the variations of the brand under the same name uh, because uh, it is now getting very close to the stage where it will snap, it will break. The rubber effect, you will recall. So with the help of uh, this uh, the performance tool, uh, you can confirm uh, whether the extendability is uh, uh, viable or not. In other words, it lets you gauge how much rational you have been in devising your 
product strategies. You wanted to gain penetration um, of the market uh, with the help of uh, an extension. And uh, that extension uh, was uh, based on fulfillment of a certain need uh, which you thought was uh, very explicitly defined. And uh, if you defined it uh, very rightly, then uh, the rationale uh, behind that uh, was uh, very logical. And uh, it was worth the weight it carried. And uh, it, this is something which you can test with the help of this uh, performance measure as to what extent could you really have been right in uh, creating your product or creating your different brands under the same brand name or within the same line. So this uh, the performance uh, the tool is a very interesting and uh, very analytical in terms of uh, the gauging your product strategies. This uh, brings us uh, to the next variant, which is all about uh, the quality perception. And I think uh, I should not really be uh, talking too much about uh, this tool because uh, this is uh, self-explanatory. Uh, you have to uh, test uh, quality perception on part of your customers with the help of research model uh, in order to make sure that uh, your quality is uh, being perceived uh, the way that you created it. So in other words, what you are out to determine is uh, whether you really are number one in the market in terms of your quality or mm, somewhere down the line. Um, is your uh, the quality the really uh, the very good or is it really shoddy? Because uh, it can be bad and that is what you have to work out. We all start with uh, the premise and uh, with the intention that the quality which uh, we are going to produce and we have produced is second to none. But then you see it is the, uh, the judgment of uh, the, uh, the users, uh, meaning the customers, which is going to lay the foundation for uh, this uh, the performance. And uh, we've got to be able to know where we really stand. We are either we are number one, two, three, or where on the list. You also would like to uh, measure uh, how much consistent you have been in terms of quality. Because uh, the consistency and dependability uh, uh, in terms of uh, your brand's performance is uh, on top of the list uh, of uh, the drivers for loyalty. You will recall uh, from the previous lecture. So therefore, uh, it takes on uh, an added significance and uh, you have got to uh, develop a research model which uh, will lead to uh, the rightmost responses. So the challenge, whatever measure you have at your disposal, is going to be the, uh, the research design which you're going to put in place in order to carry out uh, your uh, research uh, so that uh, you can um, generate uh, accurate responses for you to uh, make the right most decisions. Another uh, variant of uh, this dimension is uh, brand-driven uh, customer acquisition and customer loss. You may also call it lost and found. During the process of uh, the brand management and selling, for that matter, you gain new customers and you also lose customers. Let us talk about those customers uh, that we have gained. Uh, we have gained customers uh, as a hypothetical situation uh, this year in comparison with uh, the last. Uh, we had the figures of um, sales, uh, we had uh, the consumption patterns, and therefore, uh, trying to determine could, how many new customers could have come into the life of your brand that may not be could, as difficult as it may look uh, or as it may sound to begin with. Uh, suppose could, you are into selling consumer durables and could, you are selling could, the televisions, uh, refrigerators or uh, the kitchen appliances. It uh, should not be difficult at all to could, gauge the number of new customers uh, could, who have bought uh, sets this year. So you know how many more of them have come. But the beauty of this major 
lies uh, going to engaging with your branding strategies. If uh, those new customers could have come into the fold of your brand as a result of the branding strategies that you have in place, then um, it is a very good measure to use. So it becomes really fascinating from that standpoint of gauging the branding strategies. You do not always gain customers. You also lose customers. You have to develop the questionnaire in a way in which elicits responses to that effect also. If you are going to have... Uh, talked with uh, those customers uh, who uh, decided uh, not to buy your brand and go to some other brand, uh, whether you are selling durables or consumer consumables, uh, you've got to find out the reasons uh, why they did that. And uh, that really is going to give you uh, a very good insight into your branding strategies. And uh, that is uh, what this measure is all about. It is not, not just the numbers of the customers that you gain or the number of customers that you may have lost. Even under those circumstances, when the net effect is a total gain, you've got to be able to know how many of those were kind of dissatisfied, disgruntled, and you, in a way, lost, and how many you gained. With this, our discussion on the, the last the variant of the second the dimension of um, uh, brand equity or brand building uh, the process comes to an end. And uh, I would uh, say it again, the reason we are talking about the dimensions of brand building or brand equity is because on the one hand, they build the brand. On the other hand, if something goes wrong with these very dimensions, then you know they really negatively uh, affect our strategies and therefore these very dimensions and their variants have got to be the ones that we must use as performance measures. And that is why we are talking about these in so much detail. So, so much for uh, the uh, dimensions and their uh, the variants uh, for today. Uh, the time is coming to an end and uh, I really look forward to talking with you in the next lecture uh, in which I will wrap up this uh, the concept of uh, performance measurement. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.